Welcome back, everyone, to our second installment of Fact Sheet Friday. Today, we're going to learn more about seven more bits of kit that will be at our disposal with the release of Farming Simulator 25 on November 12th. If any of these items excite you and you feel so inclined to pre-order FS25 and will be playing on PC, then please consider using my affiliate link in the description or my partner code, FarmerKlein, on the Giants eShop. I do get a small percentage back from the sale and it'll help me achieve our goal of becoming a gold partner. If you like physical media, then I also have an Amazon affiliate link where players can pick up physical copies for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X or S, as well as the standard version for PC or the collector's edition where you can get all kinds of cool things like the USB ignition switch that will start and stop your vehicles in game. But enough with the intros, let's get to it. First shown off in a screenshot a few weeks ago, the John Deere 3650 comes to the Farming Simulator franchise as a base vehicle in FS25. A fairly affordable small tractor costing just $45,000, the 116 horsepower engine makes it ideal for many tasks around the farm and field. You're going to be hands-on driving this tractor due to the manual plus power shift transmission and ample time to ponder the meaning of life with a top road speed of 21 miles per hour. Looking at this image, we see a very minor bit of ground deformation, which is likely a result of its fairly lightweight of only 5 tons. Closing out the green in this week's fact sheets is the return of Great Plains as a base game brand. I actually didn't realize that we hadn't had a Great Plains product in FS22. We had the YP2425A in FS19, and in 25 we'll be getting, at the very least, the solid stand 1500 seater. More expensive than the tractor pulling it at $49,500, this 4.6 meter seater will be used in seeding wheat, barley, oat, canola, long grain rice, oil seed, grass, spinach, and a mystery crop, which I think at this point we all know will be either peas or green beans. The solid stand 1500 can also fertilize your crop as it has a combined storage capacity between 1270 and 1800 liters depending on the configuration. A fairly light implement in farming turns at only 1.6 tons, it pairs well with the John Deere on fairly flat and even ground as a cedar has a required power rating of 110 horsepower. Let's introduce the first new brand of the week to the Farming Simulator franchise with the Agrifac Condor Endurance 2 Sprayer. Keeping to its name, the Condor, when the sprayer spreads its wings, can have a boom width between 36 and 54 meters. The sprayer will hold either liquid fertilizer or herbicide and the 400 horsepower engine and variable CBT transmission will be able to get that 14.6 tons when empty moving at a fairly good clip down the road with a total speed of 37 miles per hour and a working speed in the field of 15 miles per hour. Now I hope it has good brakes as the sprayer is going to be a lot heavier when full because it holds 8,000 liters of product and 750 liters of fuel. What won't be heavy is your wallet because of the 420,500 price tag so this is only going to be viable for the most profitable farmers. Not a new brand, but a new model comes to the game with the Case IH AF11, the twin to the new New Holland CR11 that we know will also be coming to Farming Simulator 25. As such, I would expect the stats of the CR11 to match that of the AF11, so it's kind of a two-for-one fact sheet. Costing nearly three quarters of a million bucks, it's quite obvious the AF11 is the new flagship harvester for Case IH because several of the other numbers are also out of this world. An impressive 775 horsepower power plant is going to be used to move this 26 ton empty harvester. According to a weight calculator, 20,000 liters of, let's say, wheat would add an additional 15.8 tons to the overall impact on the ground, so expect some serious deformation when full. No wonder the configure shown here has dual front tires. Paired up with a 10 meter 4418 in corn header, this alone will run the farmer another $88,000. The 18 row header can process either corn or sunflowers at a speed of 6 miles per hour. The final fact sheet for the day is all about the bonus content for those who pre-order FS25. 
Now, no doubt there will be a way to purchase this after launch as a standalone DLC, but for now, it's a pre-order special. Remember what I said about the pre-order early on? You might want to go back and take a look. MacDon is the second new brand to come to Farming Center franchise in today's fact sheet roundup with the M1240 Windrower or Swather. The vehicle will have configuration options between 173 and 262 horsepower, and as with any machine that is fairly specialized, it's important to find enough jobs around the fields for it to do. In this configuration, it's been paired up with the D140XL grain cutting wind row header. A process that might be new to some players is the act of swathing your grain ahead of processing it with a standard grain harvester like the AF11 we saw previously. The D140XL will cut the crop and lay it down in a windrow underneath the M1240. Now there's some interesting advantages to swathing in that it can help protect the crop from weather as a standing crop dries out it becomes more prone to wind or heavy rain damage that can lead to the crop laying down which is going to make it harder for the harvester to pick it up and ultimately a slower harvest in addition swath crops can feed into the header easier and often dry out faster the D140XL will be used to cut down wheat, barley, oat, canola, or soybeans. And at 12.2 meters, the swathing header can also be larger than many grain headers, making the swathing step more efficient way to harvest due to its working speed of 9 miles per hour versus harvesters, which are typically at 6 miles per hour. This efficiency does come at a cost though because combined, this configuration will start you out at $267,000. Plus, you'll also need to get the PW8 pickup header for the harvester. The MacDon pack also includes the FD140 12.2 meter grain header for a traditional harvester and the R216SP rotary disc mower header for cutting grass. I do hope that next week Giants comes out with a blog post about the new crops of peas, green beans, spinach, and the two types of rice. Peas and green beans has to be the worst kept secret about FS25 at this point, and it would keep them from having to put those mystery crop question marks on the fact sheets. While we wait for the inevitable, why not punch that subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest official news about Farming Simulator 25? No clickbait and switch videos for me, that's for sure. This will also help me achieve a goal of 50,000 subs before the release of FS25 on November 12th. Lastly, if you've not done so already, click that like button because you clearly must have enjoyed something in the video to have made it this far. Doing so helps YouTube recommend this video to others with similar viewing habits. Come on, give that mouse a little squeeze over the thumbs up button. Didn't that feel good? Until next time, happy farming.